Hi, I'm Chris Danish, and this is CS484, Secure Web Application Development. Today, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of the web, HTTP, all the stuff that underlies our secure web application development. Chris from the future here. I just realized I'm wearing a green shirt. I'm using a green screen. I recorded it. I liked what I said, so I'm just going to stick with it. I'm going to look like a spooky ghost, so let's keep going. This is our actual first real content of the semester. We're going to learn the different moving parts of a web application and what sets it apart from the programming we've already been doing in a computer science class, because this class is intended for people that are about the level of a junior or a graduate level in computer science. So if we want to get started, we want to open up a web browser. And the very first thing we're going to do is type in a URL. URLs are these uniform resource locators, and they're just these strings. We're going to go into a little bit more detail later because there's more to it. The most basic way that we can break down a URL is that schema that tells us what protocol we should be using, how we should talk to a server, the host name, and in this case, it's the CS web server, that's who you wanna to talk to, and the resource that's being requested. So at the end, it's asking for my home directory. And now that HT in HTTP stands for hypertext. This is a really great idea, old as the 60s and before I was around, right? And it really came alive in the 90s with Tim Berners-Lee deciding, oh, hey, I want to make all this information available so that scientists can build particle accelerators. Like, that's so hardcore, right? So for just a little kind of historical context, that HT and HTTP stands for hypertext. And I had to look it up. I had to ask ChatGPT what that meant. And it means like super text, like over text. It's not just text. Because if we think about things in like 1960s brain, what is text? It's just let word after word after word after word. There's no jumping around. If you want to jump around, you got to turn a bunch of pages. You got to do the like uh, choose your own adventure book where it says, oh, go to this page if you want to do this. Go to that page if you want to do that. The web is just choose your own adventure books on steroids. You don't have to choose which thing. You just click on a link here, click on a link there. And starting with that ability to just click around and go from one piece of media to another, maybe even within that other piece of media, allows you to create the web, which as we've found over the last 30 years, is a pretty cool way to organize information such that humans and even robots can look into it and find the answers to the questions that they're asking. And so HTML, another acronym we see thrown around a whole lot is very similar, right? It's also hypertext markup language. That's that raw syntax for creating documents which support this hypermedia mode of using computers and accessing information. So if my good friend here, Shia LaBeouf, wanted to find my website, he would type in that entire URL and it would cause his web browser to actually go and start making requests and following that HTTP protocol to not only render everything from that one page, but allow him to click from one site to another and find whatever it is the information is that he wants to find. So the web is fundamentally a distributed system. And if you haven't taken a class in distributed systems before, the TLDR is that when you run code in more than one place at a time, and those two things that run code have to talk to each other to get some job done, things get a lot more complicated. The web isn't super complicated at the very basic level, but it can get complicated pretty fast. So basic idea here is that we got a dumbbell topology, and you'll hear about this in networks or in distributed systems class. And we, the idea is that we got our client on one side, we've got our server on the other side, nope, server on the other side, and the client is gonna make a request here and they are going to receive a response here. Uh, response. So our client is a user agent. The server speaks the HTTP language as a server and it sends those responses. HTTP is the set of rules that dictates how those clients and servers are supposed to talk to each other. So the simplest possible thing that Sheila LaBeouf could do is he could type in that URL uh, or click on links that are seen in the pages that get rendered by his user agent. And the server is simply going to retrieve files from a file system based on those requests. That's the most basic way that we can do the web, but things again get a lot more complicated and a lot more cool later on. So before we go into those examples of how that works, I want to give a quick shout out to Ilya Gregoric's book. This is a required reading for anybody who's taking the course, the quiz that's going to happen on Wednesday. It's going to cover some of this content. This book is awesome. It's free. Uh, you can get a paper version if you want to, but it covers just 
HTTP at a really low level. Like how does the network influence whether your web app is fast or not? How does all of that fit together to deliver a high performance web application? Uh, Ilya Grigoric used to work at Google for a really long time, wrote this book, hasn't really been updated that much, so it's a little bit dated, but everything in the book is relevant and it's super, super useful to look at all of it. But we're only really focusing in class today on the part on the HTTP protocol itself. So as you're reading this book, if you want to think about, okay, what should I be focusing on? What should I be trying to remember? So fundamentally, HTTP is sending requests from clients, receiving responses from servers. Every one of those, the both the requests and the responses have data. It could be like big, it could be little, it could be empty, it could be whatever, uh, and metadata. So the metadata is all the headers that you're going to see there. And so every request is going to have stuff. It's not the actual content that you're asking for. It's information about that content or information about that request that both the client and the server need to communicate to each other but aren't necessarily directly being shown to the user as those resources are being requested through the protocol. There's a lot of different headers. I don't even know all the headers or exactly what they mean. It, it can be very, very overwhelming. Just take a breather as you're reading through them. Some of them are going to become really important when we go over security stuff later on. So the next thing I'm gonna do in this video is a live demo of doing HTTP requests. So as you could imagine, I have been doing HTTP requests to show these slides, right? Right here, I've got a server running on port 3030 on my local host, and it is sending my slides to me. So one of the incredibly powerful parts of the web is that the protocol is open and anybody can implement either the client or either the server, however they want, as long as they follow those rules. So Brave Browser implements everything about running a graphical user interface that requests resources and then shows them to me and renders them on my screen, but I could just as easily use a command line program like curl to also ask for HTTP requests. So if I come in here and curl should be installed on basically every machine, you certainly can install it manually like using Chocolatey or your favorite package manager. We can do a quick curl of HTTP localhost 3030 uh, and then slash six, because why not? And this sends us back the response. That is purely showing us the data and then the metadata about how that request went through. So if I want to see a little bit more information, I can ask curl to be verbose and I can ask it to do the same thing. And it's going to show me not only the content, which, I, which is what I'm getting down here, it's also going to show me the metadata of not just the headers that are getting sent back and forth. So everything here that has a greater than is going from the client to the server. Everything that has a less than is going from the server to the client, kind of like arrows. And those are the headers that are being sent as part of this request response pair. Curl is also gonna show us some metadata about the actual kind of network communication between the curl process and the web server process as well. So one important thing to mention here is that an HTTP request has this first line, which is special. This is not a header. This is the actual request itself that comes from the client to the server. It's going to use a verb. It's going to ask for a specific resource slash six in this case. And then it's going to tell the server, hey, by the way, the rest of this communication is going to be using the HTTP 1.1 version of the protocol. And then everything after this line and before that blank line it sends are the headers for that request. Likewise, the server responds with a status line. This is not a header, this is the status line saying, yep, I understand HTTP 1.1 as well. I'm going to give you the 200 code. And just if you're a human following along at home, that means, okay, 200 means I have successfully responded to your request. It gives a bunch of metadata about the content that's going to be sent back to the client. And then it shows a blank line. And then it starts with the content that is doing fundamentally the same thing that the browser is doing. Being able to drop down into curl, super, super important. Definitely something that you always wanna have in your toolbox. But another way that you're probably gonna be looking at most raw HTTP requests is with your browser dev tools. So there's a lot going on in your dev tools, but the one tab that we care about right now is we're learning about the HTTP protocol is this network tab. This is gonna show us everything that my browser is asking for and then everything that the server is responding with as part of rendering the page for me. So 
I'm going to hit refresh here and I'm going to see all the stuff that comes through from the server down to the client. And it's actually a lot. This is a lot more complicated than it looks for just showing this, but that's because I'm downloading a full application. This is effectively like PowerPoint, but for the web, which is super cool. So the basic idea behind HTTP and this whole entire protocol, this hypermedia protocol is that it's asking for that first document. Again, that's roughly the same thing as we're seeing here. The server gives us that resource. And then after the browser receives that resource, it says, okay, I've got a whole bunch of rules for how to render a web page. And that means I've got to ask for this file. That means I've got to ask for this file. That means I've got to ask for this file. All that stuff is required to render the cool thing that we see on the screen here. And so the browser goes off and does that rendering. When we're on the network tab, what we can see is the headers for our request. So what the browser sent to the server and what the server sent back from the server to the client. This is just a different way to see the stuff that we saw here in the curl-v. That's what we're seeing in the browser. Now, if you're very eagle-eyed, you will see that the headers in the request and the response aren't exactly the same ones that are going back and forth. The Really important thing here is that the HTTP protocol says how you should do this, but it's not like if you want to do this, there's only one right way to do it, and this is exactly how you send it. So the request coming from this live browser is going to look very, very different than the request coming from curl. There's a lot going on in your dev tools, even in the network tab. Feel free to explore around there, ask ChatGPT what these different things mean, and you'll be using these tools a lot as we move forward in class. So the requests I just showed you were requests coming from a browser, a client going to a static file web server. That's fundamentally what we're doing in a lot of situations is we're asking a web server, hey, I want a specific resource and it finds that resource in its file system and just returns those things back to the client. You could imagine that more than just serving static files, that server could decide, oh, hey, rather than just giving you a file and keeping every single file in a bunch of big folders on a server, I could run code that will decide what bytes to send back. So the HTTP protocol doesn't say, hey, you've got to serve files from directories. The HTTP protocol just says, hey, you're going to receive a resource that's going to be a list of characters that denote something. And then based on the input that you've received from the user, and not only could it be the input of what resource is being requested, it could be the cookies that are being sent, the headers that are being sent. You, as the server, are gonna choose what to respond with and send back to the client. Now, this nil class, how websites work animation, it's super, super fun. It's really, really interesting. It's also super, super old, but it is amazing in terms of how well it is held up as a relatively accurate description of how web applications work overall. So I think if there's anything that encapsulates what we're gonna do in this class, it's understanding the moving pieces that underlie the way that this web application described in this animation works. So highly recommend going through that animation, kind of getting a rough understanding of how that works. And that's gonna be stuff that we focus on later on in class.